Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about recoverable errors with the result enum. This is the second video in the Rust error handling topic, so if you haven't watched the first video, please go ahead and click on the link in the description. But first, let's discuss what do we mean by recoverable errors. As you well know, there are things that can and often do go wrong in code. This could be anything from a missing file to network resource disconnections. With Rust, there is an elegant way to deal with these situations, and that is by using the result enum. Now, the result enum is a powerful enum that helps us handle errors gracefully without crashing our program. By understanding and using result enum, you'll write more robust and error-tolerant code. Now, let's dive into the syntax. As you can see here, the result enum is quite straightforward and has two variants, OK and Error. If everything goes as planned, we return the OK variant, but if something goes wrong, we return Error. Now, the T and the E are generic type parameters, each representing the type of value to be returned. Again, if you're not familiar with generics, there is a link to a video in the description that explains it all. Let's say we're building an app that reads user data from a file. Now, we can guarantee the file will always exist in the file system, right? That's where result enum comes in handy. So here we're looking at a simple Rust program that attempts to open a data file. First, we're importing the file struct from the standard file system module, which essentially provides file system functionalities. Reading files is one of them. In the main function, we are attempting to open a file named userdata.txt. The file open function is called with a file name as its argument. This function returns a result enum type. Now we store this result in a variable called greeting underscore file underscore result. And of course, we want to handle this result enum. If the operation was successful, we want to proceed with the file that was open. If there was an error, we want to stop the program and print the error message. To do this, we use a match expression. The match expression is similar to a switch statement in other languages. It allows us to perform different actions based on the different possible values of an expression. In our case, the expression here is greeting underscore file underscore result. If the expression is OK, meaning the file was opened successfully, we simply return the file from the match expression. If, however, it is an error, we call the panic macro with a custom error message. So this is it. We've just turned a potentially crash-inducing scenario into a recoverable situation. And that's just scratching the surface of what you can do with the result enum. OK, let's take a look at another example and write a small program that simulates pulling records from a database. First, we write a function named get underscore result. This will accept an integer parameter called res. This function is designed to return a result enum where both the OK and the error variants contain strings. We proceed to implement the match expression on the res variable. If it's a zero, we signify success by returning OK with a string message for any value other than zero designated by the underscore that you see here, we return an error. As you can notice, our error type is just a simple string, demonstrating the flexible nature of Rust's generic result enum. Moving on to the main function now, we'll call get underscore result with zero as an argument. And of course, we are anticipating a successful outcome. We run the program and we notice that it does indeed yield a positive result and it is marked by the success meshes that you see here. But what if we modify the input? Let's change the get underscore result parameter from 0 to negative 1, for example. Now we should encounter an error, and indeed we do. This simple example offers a glimpse into how you can leverage Rust's result enum to handle errors gracefully. Let's try a different example this time with a real-world scenario where we need to read data from a file. Okay, as you can see in the code here, we first import uh, the necessary modules such as the standard I.O. and the standard file system. We'll use these to read from a file and handle potential I.O. errors. Then we define a function called get underscore data. Now, this function aims to read data from a file named data.txt and returns the data as a string. 
If an error occurs during this process, it of course will return an error. Now let's break down this get underscore data function. We first try to open the file. If successful, we store the file handle in the f variable that you see here. If we encounter an error while opening the file, we immediately return this error. At this stage, the program will just panic and will exit. Next, we declare an empty string called s that will hold our file contents. We use the read underscore to underscore string method on the f variable and we pass s here as a mutable reference. If reading the file is successful, we return s wrapped in OK. If it fails, we again return the error wrapped in error variant. Now let's move on to the main function. We call get underscore data and store the result in s. Then we print the data returned. But hang on a minute, what's this unwrap method? Well, unwrap is a method called on a result value. If the result is OK, unwrap returns the value inside OK. Essentially unwraps it for you and returns the actual value that is inside. If the result is error unwrap, we'll just panic and stop the program as you will see in a minute. So you should only use it when you're sure that the result will be OK. All right, let's see it in action now. I'm gonna run the code. Okay, as we can observe upon executing our code, we indeed receive the expected data contained in the file. We can assume that the file userdata.txt already exists and contains this simple string. Let's confirm that the file does indeed exist first by using vim. So remember, we always need to double check, right? So I'm just gonna try and open this file and yeah, it does indeed exist. Now let's, maybe for a twist, let's remove userdata.txt and run our program once more. Without the file as expected, the code execution now results in an error message indicating the file's non-existent. But notice how it completely panicked and exited the program here. And there you have it. Okay, so what if we did not want the program to panic and abruptly exit? Well, we can use a method called unwrap underscore or instead of unwrap that you've seen earlier. So what does this method actually do? Well, unwrap underscore or is a method that operates on a result value, just like unwrap. If the result is OK, unwrap underscore or returns the value inside OK. However, if the result is error, unwrap underscore or returns the value you passed as an argument. So in our case here, we are just displaying a simple string that indicates that we have an error. It is a neat little way to provide a default value in case an error occurs, preventing our program from panicking and abruptly stopping, which would of course happen with unwrap like we've seen earlier. But wait, there is more. Let's replace unwrap underscore or with expect. Expect is another method we can call on a result value. It works similar to unwrap, but with a crucial difference. If the result is OK, expect returns the value inside OK, just like we've seen earlier. But if the result is error, expect will cause the program to crash and display the message you passed in as an argument. Essentially, the panic behavior is like unwrap. Your program will still crash and panic. But this time, it will do it with a customizable error message. This is great for debugging because it allows you to provide a context-specific message. All right, let's modify our main function slightly. We still need to use the getData function and store the result in S. But this time, instead of directly using unwrap, unwrap underscore or, or expect, we are introducing a match expression. Just like before, when get underscore data returns OK, we print the return data. However, if it's an error, things get a bit more interesting. We're matching on the kind of the error returned using the kind method on the E variable, which denotes our error. If the error is of kind not found, which is one specific kind of error, we print a custom message along with the error itself. For any other type of error denoted by the underscore that you see here, we print a message stating that an unknown error occurred, along with the error details. Let's run our program first with the file present. Perfect. It works just as expected. Now let's see what happens when the file is not found. Let me quickly delete this. 
and there you have it. We get a custom error message specifying that the file was not found. With this approach, we have more granular control over error handling and we can tailor our responses based on the specific types of error encountered. This is an example of how Rust enables precise and robust error handling. Of course, you can customize this and we'll see this in future lessons. Okay, so maybe just one bonus tip here before we end the video. Let's try and streamline our get underscore data function. See these question marks at the end of the file open and read to string expressions? Well, the question mark operator is used for error propagation. If the expression before the question mark is an error, it returns that error from the current function. If it's an OK, it unwraps the value inside OK and gives it back. This is an elegant and concise way to handle errors in Rust. It reduces a lot of boilerplate and makes our code cleaner and easier to read. All right, let's quickly run our program. First, when our file is absent from the file system. Excellent. It still handles the error gracefully and gives us a custom error message. Now let's see what happens when the file is recreated. Let me just do that quickly. Fantastic. As a final note, the question mark operator is a game changer for error handling in Rust. But remember, it's not suitable for all situations and it works best when you want to propagate errors up the call stack. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please do hit the like button if you enjoy this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.